Okay, so today we're learning about oceans and ocean currents. We've already talked about heat and the different forms of heat transfer. So the big one when we're talking about ocean currents is convection, which is transfer of heat through convection currents. So the warmer, less dense water is going to rise to the top and the colder, more dense water rises, sinks to the bottom. So you remember seeing that when we did our experiment with the baby food jars and with the fish tank. So right now you should have out your notes page in front of you, it says ocean current notes. And as we go through the PowerPoint, you should be filling in the notes. Um, we're gonna be adding a couple things. So when we get to um, wind and a couple other things, you'll just wanna fold up the bottom of your notes like this, because you're gonna end up gluing this into your journal. So you'll just fold up the bottom of your notes and you'll just write on the bottom half of this. So you'll glue on this side and then you'll write on the bottom of it here so that you can have those extra notes in it. So the first thing that we're talking about today is that you know, based on our talking about seasons and things like that, that the sun is what provides the energy that drives convection within the atmosphere and oceans, and it also produces wind um, and ocean currents due to uh, the unequal heating of the air and the ocean. So that first blank, it says all energy on earth starts with the sun okay so here we go all energy starts with um on earth starts with the sun um major ocean currents and wind patterns create climates so based on what um parts of the world you live in um the oceans and the winds that are nearby or not nearby can help create what kind of climate that you live in so what is the weather like what is the temperature like things like that um, solar energy, energy from the sun, um, climate and ocean systems are all interrelated. So the solar energy provides the heat, so that's why it's hot in summer and cold in the winter because it's direct and indirect sunlight. Um, the solar energy hitting the air on the oceans heats the air in the oceans and causes currents within the air and the ocean. So currents in the air are wind and then currents in the oceans spread the water around and heat the um, earth at a relatively stable temperature. Um, oceans can affect the climate of an area. And then the last thing is cycles can be modified by nature or human interaction. So a cycle, like we, we've already talked about in your past, um, we've talked about the water cycle, we've talked about nitrogen cycles, we've talked about several different cycles, cycle of day and night. Um, those can be modified by nature or human interaction. So. As humans, we are very good at messing things up. So when we interfere with the water cycle or we interfere by putting um, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, we can be messing with the climate based on the extra carbon dioxide and the other gases that we've been putting in the atmosphere. So our oceans influence weather, climate, and living conditions all around the world. Even if you don't live near an ocean, the ocean is still going to affect the climate near where you live. Okay, so what is a system? We've talked about systems. We have a human body system. We have a solar system. We have several different types of systems. So each system has its own set of parts that go with it that help for it to make it work. So for us, we're talking about our ocean system. And it says, is the system linear or circular or is it something else? So for us, when we're talking about the ocean systems or the ocean circulation system, it's gonna be in a more circular pattern. So, ocean currents are stream-like movements of water in the ocean. If you've ever been to the beach, when you get out in the water, you can feel it pulling you out. That's a rip tide. And it's an ocean current very close to the beach. Okay, um, but within different areas of the ocean, we actually have streams that flow through the ocean that are based on the convection currents within the ocean. Um, heat is transferred around the world by the ocean currents. So we know that the sun heats the equator area more so, it has more direct sunlight there than at either one of the poles. So the poles are gonna be colder and the equator is gonna be warmer. So as the water near the equator warms up, it is going to travel so it can 
transfer that heat to the colder regions near the North and South Pole is going to travel and it's going to transfer that heat by means of convection. So the warm water travels across the top, the cold water travels across the bottom, and it continues to circulate. Now, we're never going to get to thermal equilibrium when we're talking about the oceans because we always have that uneven heating at the poles and at the equator. We will never have the poles get as warm as what we do at the equator. Um, so this heat affects the weather and the climate all around the globe. Okay, so what is an ocean current? We have two types of ocean currents. The first one is a surface current. So these are currents that are at or near the surface of the ocean. Surface currents affect weather and climate at all the different coastal regions around the world. They have warm currents that start where it's warmer, so they're going to start at the equator and move north or south. And then we have cold currents or polar currents that are going to start at the poles or cooler regions of the earth and move towards the equator. So if you have a warm current going by a coast, that coast is going to be warmer than normal. And if you have a cold current traveling by a coast, that coast is going to be cooler than normal. So if you look at it here, so this ties into direct and indirect sunlight on the Earth. So when we have the Earth here, you can see that the sunlight strikes it most directly right here at the equator. And the further you travel from the equator towards the poles, the less direct the sunlight is, so the less it's actually going to heat that water. So here at the equator, since we have the most direct sunlight all year round, this area is going to be much warmer than it is at either pole or even halfway in the middle at Tropic of Capricorn or Tropic of Cancer. So this is kind of what it looks like. So these, it says dynamic ocean topography, which means the temperature of the oceans. So it's just like the rainbow where red is theoretically warmer and blue is theoretically colder, although we know that's not necessarily true when we're talking about light and heat. But in this graphic, the red is the warmest parts of the water and the blue is the coldest parts of the water or the purple is the coldest parts of the water. And you can see that the blue is located closer to the top and the bottom of the, of the globe or the earth and then the red is in the middle. So the black parts are the continents. You can see Australia here, South America, North America, a little bit of Africa on the side, and then Asia right here. So this is the Pacific Ocean. So you can see that there's an awful lot of warm water here in the Pacific Ocean. Here is um, the Indian Ocean here, because this is India, and that is warm as well. But over here, where the Pacific, I mean the Atlantic Ocean is at, it's cooler. It's more green than it is red. Okay, so surface currents are cold, controlled by three different factors. First is global winds. So when the wind blows across the top of the water, it's going to make the water move. So that's going to be a very superficial or top level surface current. Um, we also have something called the Coriolis effect which means it looks like the wind is curving when it's really not. So the best way for me to describe the Coriolis effect is if I'm standing on one side of a merry-go-round and you're standing on the other side of the merry-go-round, if we're both standing still and the merry-go-round is not spinning, when I throw a ball at you, it's gonna go straight across and you're gonna be able to catch it. But if we're both standing on there and somebody on the side pushes the merry-go-round, when I throw the ball to you, then you're going to have moved whichever direction they pushed it. You're going to have moved. My ball is still going to fly straight, but it's going to look like it curved because you actually moved away from where I threw the ball. So what that looks like is it's called the Coriolis effect. So the earth spins while the wind is blowing. The wind is blowing in a curved in a straight line, but it looks curved because the earth moves from underneath it. Okay. And the last thing that controls surface currents is continental deflection. It's really hard for the water to move in a specific direction 
when there's a ginormous chunk of continent right in the middle. So it's kind of like running down the football field and somebody throws up a wall. It's really hard to run through the wall. You have to go around the wall. So same thing happens with surface currents. When there are continents in the way, the water's got to go around the, current, uh, around the continent. Okay, so this is what a shallow water current looks like. Shallow water currents are right up here. So the wind is going to affect it. You'll have a little bit of convection here, but not very much. And then you'll have the Coriolis effect where it spins, the earth spins and the water appears to move. And then you'll also have some continental deflections. This down here, deep water currents, is the other type of ocean current. Okay, so Right, so we just finished talking about surface currents. The next one is deep water currents. So these are obviously deep in the ocean. So with deep water currents, they happen far below the ocean surface and they carry very cold, very dense water. So we know from our study about convection that warm water or warm fluids rise and cold fluids sink. So when we're talking about the ocean currents, this is water that has been cooled up by the polar regions and it's very salty and it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Once it sinks to the bottom of the ocean floor, it's going to move towards the equator where the water, warmer water is at. The warmer water from the equator is going to rise to the surface and it's going to travel to the poles where it is cold. And they're going to continue that convection cycle where it continues to transfer the heat from the equator to the poles. Okay. These form in parts of the ocean where the water density increases. So we just talked about that. You can decrease the water temperature. Remember, when you decrease the water temperature, you decrease the heat. The molecules move closer together. When they move closer together, they become more dense, and so they sink. Or you can add salt to it. If you add a lot of salt, remember that's going to make it more dense too. So if you remember when we did our lab, I poured the cold, salty water that was blue into the clear beaker and all of that cold salty water sank to the bottom because it was much more dense than the, the clear fresh water that was on top. All right, so when we're talking about the ocean, the ocean heats up and cools down very slowly, which is why convection currents are really important. So water has a very high specific heat capacity, which means it can hold a whole bunch of energy. So you can add heat to it, you can keep shining the sun on the water, and it's just gonna keep absorbing and absorbing and absorbing more energy. And it takes a very large amount of energy to change the temperature of water one degree. So water is a very big um, absorber of energy. Not only that, when it starts to cool off, it takes a very long time for the water to cool off. And you kind of get that feel when you go swimming. So at the beginning of summer, that water is really, really cold because it hasn't had a whole lot of direct sunlight to warm it up. But as the season goes along, when you get to August and even September, that water is still fairly warm. And even when you get to late September, especially if you have your own pool, the water is still pretty warm even though it's starting to get cooler outside because it takes a very long time for water to release the energy that it has. So it takes a long time to warm up and it takes a long time to cool down. So when you have a warm ocean current traveling by the coast, because it's warm, it keeps that area much warmer all year round. So it's like warmer in the winter time, but then during the summertime, because it's already cooled off by the time you get to summer, it's had all winter to cool down. When it comes by in the summer, it's cooler water, so it's going to keep that area in the summer cooler. So it heats up all summer, keeps it warmer in the winter, cools off all winter, and keeps it cooler in the summer. Which is why a lot of people like to live near the coast, like California and the Carolinas and Florida, because they've got that more moderate temperature due to the coast being right there on the ocean. Um, we've talked about this already. So heat is transferred by convection currents. That warm water's on the top, the cold water's on the bottom. 
so that continues to cycle and it never gets completely to thermal equilibrium because we're always continually heating the water at the equator and it's always getting colder at the poles. All right, so this is basically what the ginormous convection current looks like in the ocean. Okay, you can see that the warm water starts mainly here in the middle of the earth near the equator. And we have a couple places where it flips over. It flips here at the Indian Ocean. It flips here in the Pacific Ocean up near Alaska. And then it flips up here near Greenland and Iceland. Okay. The reason being is when the warm water travels up, it gets close enough to the pole here where it starts to cool off. And once it cools off, then it starts to sink. So this is where the warm water has got to the point where it's lost enough energy and cooled off to where at this point the water is going to sink. So the water sinks and travels back down towards the equator, it comes across the equator, and then splits into two different current systems. One leaps up towards the Indian Ocean, where here it's right by the equator again, so it warms up and it flips again to where now this water is warm enough and has it's less dense, so it actually rises to the top. Or it skirts right along here, close to the South Pole, comes up by Australia, and then comes up here in the Pacific Ocean and warms up here as it goes through the Pacific Ocean. When it gets up here to the top, and actually warms up enough after it has gone through the Pacific Ocean to rise to the top and then come back as a warm current. Now, you're gonna have, this is like one big ginormous current, but within this big ginormous conveyor belt or of convection, there are smaller currents all around the globe. So again, here you go. So the, the blue from the earlier slide is cold and salty deep current and then across the top is the warmer shallow curve, okay? So here are all of our smaller currents that you can see. Again, you're still gonna see the big pattern where it goes across, comes up here, comes up over this direction, but there are a whole bunch of smaller currents. And this is how people, when they sail around the globe, this is how they got from place to place was using the ocean currents and then using wind currents as well. So here's the equator, here's Tropic of uh, Cancer, I believe, Tropic of Capricorn, and vice versa, can't remember, and then the Antarctic and the Arctic circles. Okay, so you can see California has a current coming down the side of it, which is blue meaning that's cold, which is why when you go swimming over in California, it's very cold water. But if you go across the continent over here to Florida and everything on the East Coast, that's a warm current, which is why people swim in that ocean without needing a wetsuit, okay? So it says, if you look at this diagram, would you rather swim on the east or the west side of Australia? Well, if you look at the two currents, you got a blue one here and a red one here. I don't know how you like to swim, but I prefer to swim in warm waters, so I'm going to want to swim on the east side of Australia. Okay, um, The Gulf Stream, which is what affects our weather a lot, originates in the Gulf of Mexico, which is here. Okay, um, It says, what type of climate is Ireland going to have because of this? So we're saying this Gulf Stream goes this way, and then it goes up that direction, towards Great Britain and Ireland. If you don't remember which one is which, that's Ireland, that's Great Britain. So do you think they're gonna have warmer climate or colder climate? If you look at which type of ocean current is going by it, it starts off as red, it turns to black because it's just gonna split into two different directions, here and there. As it goes up, it's still warm, as it comes down, it's going to cool off. So that warm water is going to go straight up by the coast of Ireland, which makes it warmer, makes it have plenty of rain, makes them have lots of grass and trees and all that kind of stuff, which is why Ireland is called the Green Emerald Isle. Okay, so in addition to forming ocean currents, 
Um, convection currents also cause the wind because air is a fluid. It flows and it moves. So as we heat up the air, it spreads apart from each other, it gets less dense, and it rises. As the air cools off, it condenses, gets closer to each other, the molecules get closer, and it sinks. So as that happens, you're going to have wind forming because you're going to have circular motion of the air in the atmosphere. Um, high pressure moves to low pressure. So wind kind of moves downhill. If it's very high pressure over here and low pressure over here, it's going to flow that direction. Uh, fastest wind was 318 miles per hour during a tornado in Oklahoma. Usually around here, we get pretty excited when we have wind speeds plus 40 miles per hour because um, that's when things trees start breaking. Um, around 50 to 60 miles per hour, you might actually lose some shingles on the roofs and things like that. But at 318, we're going to have whole houses toppled over and cars are going to get thrown through the air and things like that. That makes it so much more exciting. All right, so when we're talking about winds, the Earth has specific wind patterns that happen across the globe. So right around the middle, we have the trade winds and the doldrums. The doldrums are kind of a barren spot where there's not a whole lot of wind just north and south of the equator because the trade winds that are here kind of die off right when they get to the middle because there's not enough change of temperature here. So in order for there to be wind, there has to be a change, a difference in temperature. But since there's not a difference in temperature right around here, there's really not a whole lot of wind. But as you move away from the equator, north or south, you're going to end up with that area where this is cooler, this is warmer, and the air is going to start to flow. And remember, these are all curved because of that Coriolis effect. They look like they're going to go straight, but because the earth rotates, it curves. Okay, so you have the trade winds here. That's how everybody got around the world back in the day to transfer goods and products and trade with each other. That's why they're called the trade winds. North and south of the trade winds are prevailing westerlies. And that means because they come from the west and go to the east. Okay, so that's why these are called prevailing westerlies. And you notice nothing's labeled down here in the southern hemisphere. And that's mainly for the fact that most of the people that named everything back in the day were all from the Northern Hemisphere, so everything is based on what they saw up here. This is where modern thought, modern science came from, was with the Northern Hemisphere more so than the Southern Hemisphere. So everything is based on what happens in the North. So we have trade winds, we have prevailing westerlies because they come from the West and go to the East. And then up here at the top, we have poly polar easterlies which come from the east and go to the west. So when we have cold fronts, they're typically polar easterlies that push their way down into the United States. Now, fun fact, gross fact, but nonetheless, is the worst latitudes. When people started colonizing the United States and uh, the Americas, they came from Europe. And Europe is over here, and America's over here. And they would come through this area and this area of course latitudes just looks like the doldrums down here at the equator. So this area right here had very little wind. So once a ship got stuck in this area, there wasn't any wind for them to catch in their sails for them to get across the ocean. So if they got stuck in this area, they had to unload cargo to lighten the ship to make sure that they could make it from Europe to the Americas. And a lot of times what would happen is they would bring horses and other beasts of burden, goats and sheep and stuff like that, across on the boat, hoping to have them when they got here. Well, when you get stuck and you have to unload cargo, first thing to go is things that are not essentially important, and that's the horses, and unfortunately the horses would be bobbing in the water because they had to throw them overboard, which is super sad because there's lots of horses in the water and they died, but that's how I got the name, the horse latitudes. Okay, this is the one that makes everybody happy living at the coast. So land and sea breezes. So when you're on land, this heats up and cools down very quickly. The water, like we said before, heats up and cools down very slowly. So during the, during the day, the land gets very hot, which 
transfers to the air over it, which heats up and rises and travels out towards the ocean. The ocean is cooler, so once the air gets out here to the ocean, it cools off, it sinks and falls. And the breeze from the ocean comes in towards the land. So we have hot air on land rising up, coming across the ocean, cold air sinking and coming back to land. So during the day, we have a sea breeze from the ocean into the land. Now at night, at night, this is going to cool off, the land is going to cool off much more rapidly than the water is. So again, this is going to get colder and this is going to get warmer. So the water is going to, the air is going to go backwards, excuse me. So the air is going to go backwards. So this air is going to get cooled off, it's going to sink and it's going to go out to the ocean. The water, the air of the water is going to heat up, it's going to rise and it's going to come back to land. So at nighttime, you're going to have a breeze out to the ocean. So daytime, it's in from the ocean. Nighttime, it's out to the ocean. So at the coast, you constantly have a breeze, which is why it's always amazing to take a kite when you go to the beach, because you're pretty much always going to be able to fly a kite.